All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Uh, for the second time in 24 hours, 36 hours, making a video about how one of the top four teams has been unceremoniously dumped out of the final series. The second team in as many days to go out of this final series in straight sets. Port Adelaide has been beaten by GWS, obviously coming off the back of the Ds, uh, going out in straight sets. It has been a wacky set of finals, or it's certainly a week two set of finals, and it's amazing to see my terrible footy tipping performance being carried into the final series as well. I have made a mess of my predictions this year. It is amazing to think that we now have two prelim finalists that back in round 15 sat at 14th and 15th on the ladder. I didn't consider back then these two sides as realistic finals chances, and yet they've made it through to the final four teams in 2023. Made a video around about, you know, late in the year where Carlton and GWS started to go on that winning streak. In the video, I said that both of those sides could do serious damage in this year's final series based on the form that we were seeing, the character, the spirit that we were playing with, and you know what? They've already ticked that box. They've already done some pretty serious damage considering both teams were outside of the top four. So to make it all the way to a prelim to begin with is a great achievement. And you do get the feeling that both of these teams could have at least one more win in them. I think it was in the same video I went on a bit of a rant about GWS in a, in a positive sense, a positive rant about how they are really a team and a club with a lot of character. For them to be in a prelim, not only after being, you know, 14th or 15th after round 15. And at that point, they were the only team that I think had lost to West Coast at that point. But not only that, you know, the the issues they've had with the retention over the years, Taranto and Hopper leaving the club, you know, who would have thought this time last year that going into 2023, it'd be better to be GWS than it would Richmond. Richmond had just acquired two of GWS's, not best midfielders, but, you know, solid B plus midfielders in Taranto and Hopper. You know, it's been a few years since Jeremy Cameron walked out on the club, as well as six other players that off season. Tanner Braun also walked out on them you know, GWS had a lot of reason to keel over and die this year. It was a new coach. Expectations were low. And Adam Kingsley, in his first season as GWS coach, has taken him to a prelim. And uh, this is starting to become part of the GWS brand. They're, they're kind of reminding me of the, the Bulldogs in, you know, the last, well, seven years where, for the most part, you know, it doesn't really matter where they finish on the ladder. Their finals performances are relatively strong. In fact, you know, I, I realized that GWS have never played in a final series where they didn't win at least one final. This is their fourth prelim. This is a seriously successful group. Obviously, it's all measured in premierships, of course, of course, but this is an expansion group uh, who has faced a lot of adversity when it comes to trying to keep their players. It was in contrast to the first semi-final where, you know, the Blues and Ds kind of traded momentum swings and it really went down to the wire. By comparison, you know, after an even first quarter, GWS started to pump the gas, I suppose, in the second term. They kicked five goals, seven, so in theory, could have been further in front. I think it was 28 points at half time, and they kind of coasted. Port won the third quarter narrowly, got it back to 26 points, and there was, uh, at the start of the last quarter, I think it was Dixon and nailed a set shot and the crowd lifts and it's 20 points the margin you get the sense that with this home crowd Port Adelaide could make a charge and actually win but it was a frustrating last term from a power perspective I think they kicked one goal nine in the end a lot of long range shots that were half chances but a lot of like shanks that were you know closer to going out of bounds on the full than they were a goal so they were getting the opportunity but it wasn't quite there and you know from a power perspective it caps off a really deflating end to the season obviously midway through the year we thought they were the best challenger to Collingwood it it wasn't clear at the time that they were necessarily even second. You know, they were probably arguably the form side of the competition at one point throughout the middle of the year. They had that losing streak. They rallied ironically against GWS where they smashed them by nine goals a few weeks ago. Now here they sit uh, going out in straight sets after a, not a great week one performance against the Lions. You kind of give them a, a bit of a mulligan because the Gabba is a tough venue to win for touring sides. But to come home on their home deck and get rolled by GWS, who, as much as I've praised them, as much as they are a tough side, it's a failure for the power. And it just seems to be this ironic thing where every time they back in Hinkley, the results seem to diminish. And then when he's in a contract year, he seems to perform. So I have no doubt that the power fans are probably banging for blood, particularly from Ken Hinkley. He seems to be one of the least liked head coaches of a team that I've ever seen, considering Port Adelaide are a relatively successful side over the last four years or three years. It's a tough game to stomach for power fans, I'm sure. You know, some of their bigger players you know, Ollie Wines and Connor Rosie in particular was pretty ineffectual in this game. He wasn't winning clearances. And they just got beaten. And GWS, a feature of their side over this final series, has been run and dash and being pretty defensively sound. And they were just clearly the better side for four quarters here. And it sets up a very intriguing prelim. Now, obviously, you go, I'll do my tips later in the week where I'll, I'll work out exactly who I think is going to win. But with GWS, you know, I think back to 2019, admittedly, I mean, it was four years ago. And Collingwood, in particular, a very different side now. But that semi final where they beat the Pies 
otherwise against all odds, I don't think GWS has any fears about winning at any venue this year. It is a tough opponent, absolutely, but both the Giants and Carlton right now have proven that they are as good as the teams above them. They left their runs late, you know, middle of the year, both of these sides look pretty dead average, but they are adhering to the formula of it's, it's really more important about how you play in finals, and both of these sides have proven that they are good final sides. If they've won two finals each, you've got to give them a red hot chance, but they have obviously got to get through the two toughest teams in the comp. But yeah, that was just my thoughts on the game. The fact that, you know, the power out and straight sets now and the Giants uh, through to a prelim, GWS and Carlton being in a prelim this year is mad. It's been a pretty wild final series, very entertaining. And you just get the feeling there may be one or two more surprises left. So it sets up a very intriguing battle. Imagine a Carlton GWS grand final. That would be one of the most bizarre outcomes I've seen in football. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on the game and the prelims. Of course, we will be doing a proper prelim uh, preview with just the tips. I'm back this week. And when I say back, I mean, hopefully I won't be sick by then, won't be hungover and reeling from two weeks in Greece. I'm back and I will be uploading on time. Thanks for watching though, guys. Appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.